Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome to part two in our series on regular expressions in Python. Let's get started. Now in the last video, we covered the basics of regular expressions. We understood what the pipe character was, stuff like that. In this video, we'll understand a couple more symbols used in regular expressions. The first one is the question mark. Let's go ahead and create our phone number rejects again. So import re and then phone rejects is equal to re dot compile again, r single quotation marks. And then inside of this, let's go ahead and use the same format as before, our three digit number. And now let's go ahead and account for the case where some people might give a seven digit phone number without the area code, and some people might give the entire phone number, okay? To account for both of those where these three digits, the first three digits of our phone number are optional, we're gonna go ahead and use a question mark. So go ahead and put your dash to signify those three digits, and then we're gonna put a question mark after the parenthesis. This question mark means zero or one. Either there is an occurrence of this or there is not, it's an optional value. By doing so, we account for the seven digit, no, seven digit phone numbers and the 10 digit phone numbers, okay? So slash D slash C slash D dash, and then we can go ahead and continue with the rest of our code, slash D three more times, and then four more times, okay? So by doing this, we go ahead and account for the seven and 10 phone digit numbers. We can go ahead and test this out. MO is equal to phone rejects dot search Whoops, MO is equal to phone rejects at search. And then inside of this, let's go ahead and just say, this is my number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. This will obviously work. MO dot group gets us the entire number. And now if we try this with, let's just say four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, hit enter, MO dot group, we get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Awesome. So hopefully you guys saw what we did there. The question mark again acts as an optional value. It allows the rejects compiler to search for two different examples, one which has the complete 10 digits and one which treats these three digits as optional, okay? So very, very fun, very cool. The second one works very similar to the question mark. That's the asterisk sign, okay? So let's go ahead and say um, we're talking about Batman, okay? And we wanna account for maybe Batwoman and then Bat whoa, 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 woman, like whoa repeated multiple times. To account for repetition, we use the asterisk sign. So let's go ahead and create a bat rejects and set this equal to read.compile. And then R in quotation marks, we're gonna go ahead and say bat wo mit. Okay. By doing this, we make if we put a question mark, this would mean that either Batman or Batwoman, both of them would work. We're considering what was optional. However, if we put an asterisk sign, the asterisk sign tells us that either Batman works, either Batwoman works, but also any repetition of WO and this word will work as well. The asterisk sign allows for repetition. So if we apply this bat rejects to let's say another statement, mo is equal to bat rejects, bat rejects dot search, and then make sure guys it's case sensitive. So right now our b is capitalized, make sure your b is capitalized as well when you're searching, otherwise you will not get a match and you will get an error. So bat rejects dot search, over here we're gonna go ahead and say, um, I am bat woman, this is gonna work mo dot group bat woman. If we search any repetition of woman, so repeat wo a couple of times, we hit mo dot group, we get the exact same thing, or we get the word that we were looking for. And then last but not least, if we try something without our wo in there, so just batman, and hit enter, mo dot group gets us batman. Awesome. So the asterisk sign, guys, is used for repetition. It's also an optional value. So either it exists it doesn't or it's repeated multiple times. That's what the asterisk key does. The last sort of symbol we're gonna be learning in this video is going to be the plus sign. The plus sign is very similar to the asterisk sign, but the, the word that you're putting in the plus sign has to exist. The plus sign doesn't account for zero occurrences. So for example, let's say we're talking about bat woman, right? Let's go ahead and go back to our bat rejects. Bat rejects is equal to read.compile over here. Our bat wo min okay so if you put a question mark either woman it's either bat woman or bat man if you put an asterisk sign it's either bat man bat woman or any repetition of bat wo min okay and last but not least if we put a plus sign the plus sign indicates that this wo has to exist so batman won't work in these scenarios so either bat woman or any repetition of wo in the word bat woman okay so bat rejects is done. We can go ahead and say mo is equal to bat rejects 
dot search. All right, fantastic. And then inside of this, let's go ahead and just try some stuff out. I am Batman. We should get no occurrence. If we say mo dot group, we're gonna get an error. That be that's because mo doesn't exist. There were no responses found. However, if we go ahead and say mo is equal to bat rejects dot search. I am Batwoman, okay? Then we can go ahead and say mo.group and we will get the exact word we're looking for. And similarly, if you do Batwoman, you will get Batwoman. All right, awesome job guys. There's one last thing that I wanna cover in this video and that is the find all method. So you understood the three characters, the question mark, the asterisk sign, and the plus character. And the last thing that we'll be covering is the find all method in reject expressions. So let's go ahead and create our phone rejects again. Phone VX is equal to re.compile inside of this r in quotation marks. And then over here, we're just going to specify our normal um, sort of three, three, four digit phone number. All right, there we go. And now we're going to understand what the find all method does. Let's say there's a big giant block of text and you want to get all the phone numbers inside of that. The find all method allows you to do that. Instead of just returning the first instance or the second instance, something like that, so you can get all of your phone numbers in a list. So we're going to go ahead and say over here, phone rejects off find all. And then inside of this, the list of text. So I have some text right over here. Amy is four, two, five, two, one, four, three, one, two, one. And Bob is this. Okay. Some very straightforward text, nothing too complicated. And you guys can make any text that you want up. I just copy pasted this, go ahead and hit enter. And then we immediately get the two numbers in a list format, which is fantastic. So whenever you're trying to search for multiple occurrences in a piece of text, use the find all method to get all of the occurrences at once. Now let's say that you were using groups. So let's go back to our phone rejects and let's place the first three digits in a group. Uh, let's go ahead and just say this first three, our next three, and then these four. Okay. So we have distinguished every one of the three sections, I guess, that is a new rejects. And now if we try running the exact same command, phone rejects of find all, and then these two numbers, we get something a bit different. Now, instead of having our items as strings, our items are now stored as tuples. And inside every tuple, we are distinguished the three groups that we created, the first three, the next three, and the last four. So again, two different ways of doing it. Just make sure that you guys know that there's two ways of returning a data. If you do have groups, or if you do have parentheses in your compiler, that will ensure that your data is returned in tuples. All right, that's it for this video, guys. We covered a lot. We understood three unique symbols, question mark, asterisk, plus. We understood the find all method. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.